Welcome to another episode of the Cougar Playbook. I'm Alex Campbell, and joining me today is the head coach of the Cougars men's basketball team, Steve Kohler. Steve, thanks so much for taking the time today to come on the show. What's going on? Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So before we look ahead to the fall, I want to start today by looking back at this most recent season, which was, of course, strange for everybody amid the changes caused by the pandemic. You know, for you personally, what do you think you're going to remember most from this past season? And what lessons do you hope your players keep with them from the year that was? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we just kind of got done meeting with all of our guys on our, our postseason meetings. Um, and, and the thing that they all kind of took from this was, you know, just controlling the things that you can control, you know, because there were so many things that you could not control this year. Um, and we prepared for it. You know, when it started coming in March, uh, previous March, we were telling them like, hey, this is going to be like something you've never been through through before but the good thing is is none of us have ever been through before and we really just prepared to be inconvenienced you know um and and honestly we made a pact that we weren't going to build in excuses you know there was a chance that we were going to go into a game and all of a sudden we have two guys out that we thought we had you know and we were just going to prepare the guys that we had and we were going to have that standard for ourselves you know on a daily basis um and then like the same thing the that the guys kind of took from it just, you know, understanding how to handle adversity and control what you can control and be able to adapt, you know, because if you couldn't do that, it, it became even more of a challenge than it already was. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. The, the unpredictability of it strikes me as maybe the diff, most difficult day to day thing. Um, yeah. And then that takes you guys into this offseason, which is, as I mentioned, obviously unique going from a year that was totally abnormal to hopefully a fully normal full go schedule starting in this fall so both from a, a preparation but also a recruiting perspective how yeah. is this offseason different for you as a coach uh you know it's not too different um I think that it is different in a sense that we're able to work with our guys right now which is tremendous um and I NCAA if you're listening I hope you change that rule so that we are able to do that. Um, the guys are, they've been just locked in, you know, our, our thing every day is just continue to get better. And we need this, you know, this is really big. We have a mixed group, but we have a lot of youth, you know, and a lot of youth that had major opportunities this year. Um, and then we also have veteran leadership. So just approaching each day with like, okay, yeah, we just had a year, but like our approach is that we're in there getting better every day, you know? And so it's really big for us. Um, recruiting, it's just from the standpoint of, you know, Hey, we're looking to take the next step, you know, and we've got another year under our belt and the foundation being built and that standard being set. And, and this is going to be a special deal here, you know, and finding the right guys, um, that want to be a part of something pretty special. So from that standpoint, it's the same. Um, it's, you know, but from the other part, like I was talking about, it's been great to be able to work with our guys and we've got a little bit longer here to go. You mentioned that this was a really young roster this past year, that a lot of guys really had to step up. Obviously, it wasn't the season you would have expected or, you know, guys didn't play the minutes they would have in a full year. But how much of a benefit do you think it'll be this coming season for all those younger players to have, you know, played big roles in 2020, 2021? And how do you expect that to prepare them for this coming campaign? Yeah, it's really big. Um, I mean, you know, just because you were in a certain role one year doesn't mean you're going to be in that same one the following um, because of recruiting, because of getting guys back healthy. Um, but it's huge. You know, there's no substitute for experience. And also, I thought the other huge thing was even before we played, even though the games, it was very different we had months of where those incoming freshmen were able to practice and then physically develop. And like, typically you don't get that, you know, you've got about a month of practice and then you're playing games and then your development changes a little bit. It falls a lot more on your shoulders. Uh, but with this year, I mean, we were going in October one and we didn't play until, you know, whatever it was in January. And so like, they had a lot of time to really develop their bodies and to go, okay, this is what the college game looks like. And then to be able to get 40 something practices under their belt before playing a game, you know, so, and then, like I said, there's no substitute for that experience. So them being able to see how much bigger, how much stronger, how much faster, how much more their skill set needs to develop. And not just young guys, that's everybody. Right. Um, but being to be able to get on that floor and see, okay, I, I got to work and, and, you know, and then just hitting the ground running in the off season. So 
um, and then really getting an understanding and perspective of what it is to compete at this level as well. This past season, I think it's fair to say you guys got better as the season went on and you were really playing your best basketball toward the end of the year, I think. But one of the constant stalls, constants, excuse me, all season were the performances of Jordan Matthews and who, you know, was acknowledged as a first team all conference player and just really all season seemed to maintain a consistent, really high level. How would you describe Jordan's work ethic and just, you know, how important he is to the success of this team? Yeah, absolutely. I'll hit that first part you talked about. Um, that That's always going to be a constant with us is that we, and we talk about this all the time, like we're going to be a different team, you know, from November 1 to January 1. We, if you look, even last year, this year, we're always going to get better as the year goes on, right? Now, how good do you start? That That's, that's the thing that's up, right? You got to kind of, okay, we do we want to start the way we did? No, there's a lot of things we couldn't control. But because of the way we approach it, we're always going to get better and we're going to be at our best down the stretch. That's what great teams do. Um, now, hitting on Jordan, you know, he was right in that same boat, too. You know, he came in and was kind of adjusting as a transfer and figuring out and he got better and better as the year went on. But he grew so much as a leader and and just from and there's a comfort, there's a comfortability, you know, level right there, too, like kind of figuring out what's my role and then do I say things and we were just really challenged him, you know, to continue to grow. Like, hey, man, you do it every single day. Your teammates love, love and respect you. They're watching what you do. You can push guys, right? They respect you already. And so he kind of started to understand that. And then also when you play at that level, it backs up what you do, right? And the big thing about him is he does it every day. You know who he is. You're going to get the same guy every single day. Um, and he was tremendous. You know, we started to put more and more on his plate, um, and, and he'll take over even more leadership. You know, it's not just him. Um, and it's important that he feels he understands that. Um, but he's a huge part of it. And, and I think our guys really rallied around, you know, his effort and his, his level of competitiveness and they feed off of him as well. So he, he had a tremendous year. And then in addition, in addition to Jordan being named to NAC South first team all conference, Isaac Riddell was named as the NAC South Defensive Player of the Year, and Isaac and Brent Hatton were both named as all NAC honorable yeah. mentions. Um, Isaac stepped up big this year, and Brent hit the ground running after missing the first few games. What makes them stand out to you as players that may not be obvious maybe from just stats and awards? Because it really seemed like those guys had a hard-to-quantify value of benefiting this team. Sure. I think um, with, with Brent, it, it's his value is not going to be hard to quantify. You know, it, it was such a, a different year for him and missing, I don't know, however many it was the first eight games or whatnot, and then coming back, hitting the ground running. I think he might have a double double in every game he played in. So that's pretty damn good. But um, he's just scratching the surface. I mean, he's got some tremendous things ahead of him um, and he's, he knows it. I don't know if he truly knows it, but the great thing is his work ethic matches up with it and his teammates push him. They know what he's got, you know, ahead of him. So when, when you get Brent in a situation, because you just looked at, at him from his freshman year, his sophomore year, just physically the changes that he made, that just shows what he did in the off season. He's going to continue to take those steps forward. So he he's an elite player. He's going to be an elite player in this league. Um, and, and he's got incredible things ahead of him for sure. Isaac is the epitome of solid every single day. Again, it's the consistency. I talked about that with J-Rock, but Isaac, you just know what you're going to get, right? And he's not the biggest rah-rah guy and a huge energy guy, but he does everything well, right? He can rebound. He can defend. He leads in his own way. Again, another example that guys look at and go, that's what it looks like, right? On the floor and off the floor in the classroom. He's tremendous. Same thing with Brent. You know, that's what it looks like to be a leader um, in this program, you know, and so you just know you have consistency, you know, with Isaac and he's a guy that's been there. He started a ton of games. He's played a lot of minutes and, and he just competes and he's the ultimate selfless dude. Um, and so guys love playing with him. They, they love, you know, him personally. And, and then just, you know, the defensive player of the year stuff, he was one of the only guys in the league that was like top five in the defensive rebounds, blocks and steals. It's not like he's some physically imposing guy, you know, I mean, but he competes, he knows how to use those tools and he's just the epitome of an everyday guy. 
So obviously you've got Jordan, you've got Isaac, you've got Brent. These guys kind of formed the foundation, it felt like, of this roster this year. But we mentioned you had a lot of youth on this team, a lot of guys stepping up and playing a lot of minutes. Who is the player or who are the players who you think fans should expect to see take a big step this coming season? Sure. Well, that's interesting. You know, I mean, it's up for what those guys do in the off season, but I think as the year went on and, and daily, you can see uh, E-Man, Emmanuel Wilson, just continue to grow. Um, you know, in our meetings, our, our player meetings, you know, we ask the guys to list who they feel like are, are going to be some of the best leaders going forward and everybody to a man lists him, which is a, a huge compliment to him um, because of his work ethic though. Guys see that, you know, guys are smart and they see how hard he works. And a lot of our guys do, um, but he's got some special ability. So I think he'll take, you know, a big step from that freshman to sophomore year. Justin Greenlee continues to mature and get better. We have a few guys we got to get back healthy from injuries and we'll see from there. Um, and then what we're actually, we're getting Jalen Meeks back um, off of a couple injuries, you know? And so he's made the decision that he wants to be a part of something special and that's huge. Um, and we need that. We need that linchpin leadership from our upperclassmen to add to J-Rock and to Isaac. Um, and so, you know, we'll see. I know that that, that he's attacking his rehab, um, but he's a guy that I think will just make an impact in so many different ways for us as well next year. So the rest, we'll see. Stay tuned. I love that as a coach to see like, wow, okay, this guy had an awesome offseason. He's bigger, stronger, faster. He's better. You know, and, and it's a testament to our guys. I think all our guys are going to take that approach because they know that's who we are and that's what we do. And that's what the expectation is, to be honest. So during this offseason, as you, you know, you look at the, the guys, you know, you're, you're bringing back almost everyone on this roster. You did have a couple of seniors, but the vast majority of yeah. this roster is coming back. You're spending time with these guys in the offseason, getting some guys back off of injury. What excites you the most right now about your team? What are you looking most forward to about seeing them back on the floor in games this fall? Just our approach, just our approach every day, the belief um, that we've got something special here. And, you know, it doesn't matter, honestly, like it's great to have returners, but that doesn't guarantee you anything. And we've talked to the guys about that. Now, the thing that it does guarantee you is that you've got that leadership and that foundation. You have several guys that are back now that know what it looks like on a daily basis. So just our guys approach, you know, just hearing them talk after we meet with the workouts and saying, hey, you know, we've got to do this better. Like we got better today. Um, and I think just them understanding our vision that we're emphasizing to them every single day. When the players start talking about it, you know you got something rolling pretty special. And just who they are. We have a ton of talent and ability, but just who they are as people. We got some special people in this program, selfless guys, and they're committed, you know, to to the we and not the me. So, there's some special times ahead of us, no doubt about it, and we understand that that it takes the work on a daily basis though. That's the only thing that matters. Well, head coach Steve Kohler, you've got me excited about seeing you guys back on the floor a few months from now. I'm sure the players, the fans, and the families all around this team are super excited as well. And we'll keep an eye on you guys and look forward to the fall and seeing Cougars basketball back here at CUC. So, Coach Kohler, thanks so much for taking the time today to come on Cougar Playbook. I really enjoyed it. My pleasure. Appreciate you having me. We're looking forward to getting fans and getting everybody back in the gym as well.